He's already had his workout. He's already been swimming today, and he went for a run. What else did you do? You did some pull-ups. So now we're going to also do um, a deep stretch. So we're going to wait just a moment or two while everybody starts hopping on. But how y'all feeling out there? It's the end of uh, Thursday. Another, Another week down. Almost a full week of not being spring break. And I still have an Well, I mean, Hillsborough County is considered a, uh, an extended spring break, but it's not spring break. Not when you're doing online homework. So. <laughs> Steven's doubtful that we're going to have anybody logging on today. I'm hopefully going to prove him wrong. Look, we're up to two people now, Steven. It's fine. All right, you can show, so anyways, so this is Steven, this is my boy, my youngest, and this is Katie Cat. she also goes by Katie Purry, she also goes by another name that um, I probably won't share, <laughs> it might not be appropriate for everybody, but yeah, so, um, so yeah, we are, I was just saying that we are, I mean, technically this is an extended spring break. Stephen thinks it's spring break. I don't think that it's spring break still. I feel like we are too far into this to actually call it a break. It is different. It is a change of pace, and we are in a different schedule. But if he and she are doing homework and engaging with their classmates and their teachers, we're not in spring break anymore. So there's a lot of chores going on. This is going to be an interesting live feed. So anyways. So we're gonna wait just a moment. Um, I'd love to hear how you guys are doing. I see Brandy's on. Hey girl, hey, good to see you. Oh, I even think I see Sabrina. What's up? Hey girl, I thought you'd be back from your uh, back to work. So this is a treat. Good, okay. Three people moved out. No, we've got, oh yeah, somebody just jumped off. Okay, whatever, it's fine. Okay, so today's, um, today's deep stretch is going to be geared towards uh, youth athletes. Both of my kids are in competitive sports, and um, even though I suspect their seasons are sadly, like, um, probably going to be over. I don't know that for sure, but anyways, it makes my heart sad, but both of them are continuing to train, um, and it's... Anna's training at least five days a week. Um, Stephen is modified. Stephen is a little bit modified, but his club is continuing to support him uh, by being able to give challenges. And then they even had some fun homework. He had to watch a, um, a game today on uh, tactical skills. So uh, he's been out in our side yard working and doing juggling with a tennis ball and then doing this exercise, exercise called the Eiffel Tower with a regular size soccer ball. So with that, um, and since we have extra time, uh, we're doing a little bit of deep stretching. So if you guys have youth athletes at home, I hope this is helpful. Um, I'll keep these Facebook Live feeds up for probably a week or so until I really need to delete them, or I'll try and do my best to transfer them to my YouTube channel, which is Kidding Around Yoga with Tina. I would love for you to subscribe. I'm up to like 23. I think it takes a thousand for YouTube to even recognize that you are a channel. So <laughs> if you wanna follow us, that'd be great. Okay, so today we're gonna start in standing. We're gonna start in mountain pose. And so bring your bodies to your mat, or even you don't need a mat, you can just find yourself on the carpet. But try and find your the front of your hip bones here, ears over shoulders, shoulders over hips, and then your hip bones in the front right here, 
And that's where you can tell where your feet are hip width apart. So don't take the guidance from your bottom, take it from your hip bones, okay? So then line your knees and your ankles up with your hip bones. Check in to make sure that your toes are all 10 pointed towards the front of the mat. Roll the shoulders up, back and down, palms facing forward. Bring all 10 toes off of the mat. Take a deep breath in, big breath out. And then slowly dropping one toe at a time into the mat, giving the mat a little hug, engaging the legs, the glutes, pulling that belly button in towards the backbone, checking in to make sure your ears are over, shoulders, shoulders are over hips, soften the knees so that you're not locking out. And from here, I invite you to close the eyes or bring the eyes right in front of where you're standing into a soft gaze and five deep breaths. In through the nose and out through the nose, or in through the nose and out through the mouth. Try and slow the heart rate. Settle the body. Try not to be afraid of being still. One more deep breath. And a long, slow exhale. And then wiggle your fingers and wiggle your toes. So this is going to be a little bit more relaxed. Um, that's why I'm allowing the, the dog and the cat to roam freely around the house. We'll see how that works. So continuing, Stephen, you're going to face the camera in mountain pose, and I'm going to face this way. Holding hands with yourself, sending the fists towards, towards the floor, opening the chest and the heart, looking up towards the sky, pulling the belly button in towards the backbone to protect that lower back. Take three deep breaths here. And then slowly release and then coming into ragdoll and just drape the whole top of the body towards the earth bringing try and bend your knees so that you can bring the top of the head towards the earth take three breaths here soften the jaw so maybe bringing in separation between the top and bottom teeth and after your third breath slowly rolling all the way up. Maybe roll the shoulders up, back and down. And bringing the shoulders forward. And come back to neutral. Standing on your left leg. Now we'll be, I think we'll be opposite in the way that you're viewing. So standing on your left leg. Find a focal point. In yoga we call it a dristi. Um, but you can find, like, we've got lots of spots that you can keep your focus. But to help you keep your balance, if you find a focal point, pulling your belly button in towards your backbone, and then just kind of concentrating on that spot. So don't watch yourself in the, in the uh, video feed. <laughs> okay, so standing on your left foot, slowly bringing your right knee in towards the body. Continuing to keep ears over shoulders, shoulders over hips, belly button pulled in to protect your lower back. Maybe roll the ankle in one direction and the other. Slowly lower the leg halfway down, and then see if you can send that right knee out to the side, starting to warm up the hips. Continue to breathe, keep your focal point and then slowly bringing that leg back to neutral and then stepping that right foot back into a high runner's lunge. So high runner's lunge is not warrior one. The heel is going to be lifted, pressing into the left, I mean into the right heel. Left knee is over left ankle. Check in with your hips, make sure they're square towards the front of the mat. And Steven is bending into this right knee. Is that because you're a little bit tight there? Okay, so if you need to bend, that's A-OK. -okay. You can sweep the arms up for three breaths. And release, bringing that right foot forward, pressing the heel into the mat. And then ball of the right foot into the mat and just kind of move the ankle back and forth, rolling in circles. Keeping that belly button pulled in. 
and release. Coming up on all tippy toes and releasing, maybe bringing the toes up, kind of working the Achilles a little bit, pedaling the feet back and forth. And then balancing on your right foot, feeling the big toe, little toe, heel pressed into the earth. Draw that left knee in towards the body. Roll the ankle. Since he's a soccer player, I'm already hearing like kind of the snap and crackles of the ankles. So they train at a different level than I did. I wasn't a soccer, but anyways. So lower the leg halfway down. Find your focal point. Pull the belly button in to stabilize and then sending the left knee out to the side. Take a breath, slowly drawing back to center and then sending this foot back to a high runner's lunge. So again, toe, um, ball of the foot, toes are engaged with the floor, heel is lifted, hips are square to the front of the mat, sweep the arms up, knee, right knee is over the right ankle, pulling the belly button in, take three deep breaths. Shoulders over hips. And slowly coming forward, placing the heel out in front of you, toes are all lifted. And then ball of the foot to the floor, roll the ankle in one direction. And the other, coming back up on tiptoes. We're just practicing with balance a little bit. So as we're tiptoes, Really engage the core. Try and keep your alignment. So ears over shoulders, shoulders. Bless you. Thanks for caping that sneeze. <laughs> shoulders over hips. And then coming back down. So we're going to move into a standing figure four or a standing pigeon pose. Um, because I have a feeling I've got a lot of youth athletes um, watching today. Because that was kind of our focus. Although this is great for any athletes. We're also gonna work a little bit on balancing challenge. So we've already practiced a little bit with balance. We're gonna start by doing um, right ankle above the left knee. So really be cautious not to um, put any pressure on the knee. So we're starting in our figure four, bending into the left knee, sending the hips back. Engage the core, nice long spine. So try not to round, try and keep the shoulders away from the ears, nice long spine. So really think about the base of your skull all the way down to your tailbone. You can lightly press in to the right thigh to get a little bit deeper stretch. On the next exhale, slowly standing up, transitioning while balancing, and see if you can grab the top of the right foot with your right hand. You can also balance, give a little extra balance here. Press that right foot the top of the right foot into the right hand for a deeper stretch. There should be no pain in any of these stretches. Um, so if you're feeling any discomfort, dial it back a little bit. If you're losing your balance, <laughs> you can always put your foot down and begin again. So really soften the gaze on a focal point, engage the core, soften the breath for easier balance. And then slowly, if you're still balancing, see if you can come back to the figure four. Sending the hips back and breathing. Don't tell the people that it hurts. It hurts. <laughs> and then slowly release and shake it out. Okay. And then uh, in yoga, even though this isn't a traditional yoga, um, a yoga session, we are doing some yoga poses. But what you do on one side, you do on the other to remain balanced. So we're gonna do that same series on the other side, this time balancing on the right. Starting in figure four. And reminders for balance, bringing your belly button in towards your backbone. Really bring alignment, nice long spine. Take your time, soften your breath. Try not to hold your breath and try not to tighten the jaw. So sending your body into the figure four. And then to challenge the balance and if it's not a great balance day for you it's fine just put your foot down and then do the quad stretch next if you want to do the balance challenge without putting the foot down see if you can grab the top of the foot with your left hand 
pressing the top of the left foot into the left hand. You can also extend the arm out in front for extra balance. <laughs> and then see if you can slowly transition back to the figure four, sending the hip back, engage the core. It's not time to lay down. I don't think we're laying down at all today, Steven. And then slowly, slowly stretching it out. Um, okay, standing cross leg. So this, really check in, make sure your toes are all pointed towards the front of your mat. Check in with them. So no duck feet, none of that. You want all toes pointed forward. Find your hip bones, find their alignment, make sure that they are even. Taking a deep breath in, and on the exhale, stopping halfway, nice long flat back. So really bringing the top of the head forward like someone is pulling a string through your spine. So try and nice long, let me see if I can show you. Nice long spine. So perhaps you're balancing something. Perhaps you're balancing a soccer ball back there. And then if you feel like this isn't a deep enough stretch, then you can extend the arms down, start reaching towards the floor, and possibly bringing the knee and the nose closer together. How you doing, buddy? Coming halfway back up and then all the way up and shake it out. He can't. He can't sue me because I'm good. He owes me money. So switching sides. Inhale, exhale, stopping halfway. Check in with the toes, make sure they're pointed towards the front of the mat. If you want to deepen the stretch, come all the way down. Possibly bringing the nose to the knees. But again, no pain, so if you need to stop halfway, just stop halfway. If you're stopping halfway, really focus on a nice long spine. And come on back up and shake it out. Floss it up? No. <laughs> okay, pyramid pose. This is just a medium step back. All 10 toes are pointed towards the front of the mat. You're gonna get a nice uh, deep stretch, like I've got my right leg forward, so a nice deep stretch in the left leg. Really align ears over shoulder, shoulders over hips. Bringing the belly button in towards the backbone, hinging at the hips, softening that right knee, really elongating the spine. So we want a nice long spine here. I'm trying to make sure and then once you get halfway, you can drop the arms down and again, see if you can bring the nose towards the knee for a nice long, deep stretch. Take a breath. Come back halfway, all the way up and shake it out. Switching sides. <laughs> so now my left leg is forward. Checking in with the hips, making sure that they are equal. Take a deep breath in, exhale, hinging, coming halfway, nice long spine. Staying right here if that feels like a good stretch. If you need to go deeper, trying to reach towards the floor, and then even deeper, bringing the nose towards the knee. Take a breath in through the nose, out through the nose, Slowly coming back to halfway, nice long spine, and coming back up and shake it out. So um, moving into our wide-legged stretch. Woo, time flies. Um, wide-legged stretch. All 10 toes are gonna point in the same direction. So up to you if you wanna point towards the camera, that's fine. So respect what your flexibility is like. Um, Perhaps I can go a little bit deeper because I'm a yoga instructor and I do this all the time and perhaps maybe he needs to stretch a little bit more. So I can probably go a little bit deeper but I know my body's flexibility. I think Steven kind of knows his too. Try to respect not going further than is respectful to your body. So keeping the hips in line, toes pointed forward, ears over shoulders, shoulders over hips, take a deep breath in. And then exhale, stopping halfway, nice long spine here. 
and then dropping the hands towards the floor and reaching towards the floor. If this isn't a deep enough stretch, you can always heel toe walk the feet out a little bit wider and come to forearms or send the fingertips through to the other side. We'll maybe come back a little bit. I feel like maybe that's too deep. <laughs> Slowly heel toe the feet forward. Inhale, exhale, stopping halfway. Try not to lock those knees out and then come all the way up and shake it up. Maybe try and know your limitations. Okay, so fire toes, we're gonna come, we're actually running out of time, I'm impressed. I was trying to keep this to 30 minutes. Maybe it's the, uh, the banter back and forth that's sucking up all the time. Mm -hmm. So fire toes, Stephen's gonna point towards the camera, I'm gonna, I'm gonna point towards Stephen. So coming up on tiptoes, extend the arms out, parallel with the floor to help you with Sorry, I was in your personal space. <laughs> and then slowly engage the core, keep your alignment all the way down. So when you're going down, try not to hinge forward. Really imagine like your, um, your torso is an elevator going down with the knees. So the way that we do this is inhale and then slowly exhale, keeping up on tiptoes. Try not to drop through the dead space and coming all the way down. Good, buddy, good. Okay, and then from fire toes, you can challenge yourself a little bit deeper by doing tippy toes. So you can cross one knee over the other, bring in the hands to heart center. You can stay right there. If you want to challenge your balance even more, this is gonna be even harder for me. Um, staying on tippy toes, so I'm balancing on my left toes and then trying to refine your alignment Coming to heart center. And release. And then stand up and shake it off. <laughs> that was hard. Okay, starting back at fire toes, sending the body down, nice and strong bodies. And coming back to the other side for tippy toes, either staying right here. <gasps> he's fine. He said he's fine. We'll ice it later. And then going a little bit deeper, knowing that your balance and your flexibility could be different on each side. Softening the breath and whew, releasing. Come all the way down and sit and shake it out. Were you waiting for that? All right, coming to an easy seat and then holding on to uh, the side of the right foot and the right knee gently rocking back and forth. We're gonna try something here. Um, I know a lot of runners are tight in the hips and tight in the legs. Um, hips are really important. They're the intersection of the body. It's really important, go ahead and switch sides. It's really important to keep healthy, flexible hips to really support the health and strength of your spine and the health and strength of your lower body. So we tend to neglect it a little bit and overuse the same muscles in running. So whether it's soccer or cross country or track. Um, so just appreciate, I mean, I'm not very flexible at this. I think we're just gonna have time to do, we'll see. We're gonna start with fire log. So with fire log, I'm gonna bring the shin parallel with the front of my mat, and then it's gonna go ankle over knee. Is it fire because it hurts a lot? <laughs> No, it's, kind of, it's supposed to be like it's stacked fire logs, not because it hurts a lot. So you can grab a pillow or a blanket. We happen to have blocks. I'm not as flexible doing this, but you can feel. So no pain here, right? No pain. And if it is painful, dial it back. Just bring the foot or the leg forward and lean into it, not on the knee. But this is a great one to kind of work into. So really think knee over ankle, knee over I mean ankle over knee. Finding those sit bones, those are the bones in the hips we sit upon, nice alignment, so ears over shoulders, shoulders over hips, there you go, belly button pulled in, and then switching sides. Noticing if you're more flexible on one side than the other. So maybe I'm a tiny bit more flexible on this side, but really checking in with your alignment, feeling the sit bones connected with 
the earth. And then slowly unwinding. All right, we do have time for this. So this one is called cow face. I don't know why it's named that. It's not, I mean, cow faces are cute. But this one is tricky because you want to be able to find the sit bones connected with the mat. So sitting up nice and tall with a nice long spine, nice alignment. You're going to try for knee over knee with this. Steven and I practiced this before, and it was already challenging for him. So what I suggested he do was extend one leg and just cross it over. So I'll show you the full cow face. He'll show you the modification. Find your sit bones, the bones in your hips pressed into the mat. So I have my right leg crossed over the left. So that means I'm going to take the left arm up and over and the right arm sweeping behind to be able to hold hands with myself. So I'll show you from this direction. I don't know. Can you see that? I don't know. But ears over shoulders, shoulders over hips. So if you can't have the proper alignment with this, if you can't sit with a long spine, oh, look, you got it? Good. Then modify it. So even if that means that you're not doing the arms all together. And then slowly switching sides. Modification. Full expression. So left knee over right knee, and then that means right arm up, left arm sweeping under. See if you can hold hands with yourself, and then find your alignment. So ears over shoulder, shoulders over hip, belly button pulled in. Feel the sit bones connected with the earth. And maybe smile. <laughs> Take another breath in through the nose. Long, slow exhale. Find yourself in an easy seated position. Sometimes I like sitting on a block or a pillow to do this, just to elevate my hips a little bit. We aren't gonna do a full resting pose. We're gonna do a seated resting pose. Find ears over shoulders, shoulders over hips, belly button pulled in towards the backbone. Soften. Try to soften the skin of the face, maybe close the eyes. Bring separation between the top and bottom teeth with the lips closed. Notice the breath. See if you can soften the shoulders. Maybe drop the chin just a little bit to bring separation or a little bit more space at the top of the spine. Notice where your breath is. Maybe bring a little bit of gratitude in for everything that the body is capable of. Gratitude for everything that your mind is capable of. Knowing that really, especially during uncertain times, our response is something we absolutely can control. Taking five deep breaths in through the nose and out through the nose, filling the air in the belly, expanding the ribs, sipping into the chest. Long, slow exhale from the chest, the ribs, bringing the belly button in towards the backbone. Inhale. Long, slow exhale. Inhale, expand the belly, the ribs, sipping into the chest, hold. Long, slow exhale, draining the breath from the chest, the ribs, drawing the belly button in towards the backbone. Two more times, inhale. Long, slow exhale. One last time, try to lengthen the breath on the in-breath and lengthen it even further on the exhale. Wiggle the fingers and toes and softly open. In, gathering up this beautiful energy you helped create. It just hit me in the back of my head in between the palms of the hands. Bringing the hands to heart center to hold it with you the rest of the day. May you be well. May you be safe. May you be at ease. 
May you be at peace. Thanks for joining me today. And thank you for joining me today. I appreciate your support. Um, I especially appreciate the support while I am creating a whole new platform for bringing yoga to my community. And it's super exciting bringing um, yoga to a larger audience and being able to connect with my people back from home in Virginia and all over um, all over the United States. I even had somebody from Toronto um, tuning in the other day. So it's really exciting. Um, these are uncertain times. So me being able to still share yoga makes me feel at ease. So it's a blessing to me. I hope that it's a blessing to you. And hopefully we will see you next time. Um, I usually will post my schedule for the week on Sundays. This coming week's gonna be a little bit different because I'll be doing a few different things. Um, so just bear with me while I'm figuring it out. Namaste, the light in me honors the light in you. Thank you so much for joining us. Bye, see you next time.